Hey, I'm Randall T. with BevNet. We're here at Fresh Bev headquarters here in New Haven, Connecticut. I'm here with co-founder Mike Boise. Mike, thanks so much for having us. Pleasure to have you guys. We Definitely. Just, yeah, we just took a really fantastic tour of the facility. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a lot of really cool things going on right now. Um, specifically, your cranberry uh, juice line, which is coming out, the new ripe craft juice. Yep, um, very exciting for us. Yeah, so we, we wrote a little bit about that. Um, what's the, uh, why don't we just refresh, you know, what's the genesis behind the line? What's the... Uh, you know, what were you looking for um, to sort of differentiate yourself and your company and your brand from a lot of the other cold press juice uh, companies that are out there? Yeah, no, that, and you actually hit the nail on the head at the beginning there. And it, it really initially was about differentiation. Um, you know, we're in an environment right now where there's some awesome companies putting out some great cold press juices out there. But ironically enough, as, as young as the industry is and the space is, Companies like us that are young and innovative, we constantly look for ways to pivot and differentiate. And the, the, the one way we really found we could do that very quickly was to go narrow and deep and really be a specialized company that's going to focus on one thing. And that is really to, to dominate the cranberry space. Mm -hmm. So to really be able to create a scale driver brand that goes narrow and deep, 100% traceable, and just focuses on making the best cold-pressed HPP cranberry juice we can, as well as our other brand, uh, Ripe Bar Juice, as well. But uh, mm -hmm. um, So with those two brands, we feel like that's exactly uh, that it. Narrow, deep, specialized. Mm -hmm. Now you have a really great partner um, for this new line for Ripe uh, Craft Juice and Ocean Spray. Um, what was the process like of, of working together with Ocean Spray? And, um, you know, what's their real interest in getting involved in this space? Um, it's actually our interest originally. Um, the, the, you know, we own the brand 100%, and really where Ocean Spray came in is that in, in part of refocusing and pivoting as a company, like how can we create a product and leverage our technology and experience in cold press, what's the next thing we could really do? And that was to find a regional ingredient. I mean, we're up here in New Haven, Connecticut in the Northeast. You know, a lot of great juice companies out there right now are from California and the West Coast. So what could we use as a regional, as a regional ingredient that could really leverage our company as well? And that was cranberries, cranberries and cold-pressed apples. So we found a, a great, strong regional cooperative, Ocean Spray, and approached them to really, we felt in order to create a scalable brand as well, we knew that we had to find and partner with a company that when we talk about traceability and quality and cranberry varietal, there's a lot of great local farmers out there, but a lot of times in order to create a brand that we're going to retail in the natural specialty channel with premium leading retailers, we wanted to be very confident that the ingredients and the, and the, and the raw materials we were using were what they were and what the farmers said they were. And again, in order to scale a brand, uh, from small to very big nationally, we, we knew we had to have a supply chain and a partner that would be able to support us through that. So from quality, supply chain, and, and the actual varietals, Ocean Spray were. I mean, they've been growing. What a lot of people don't realize is they are a farmer-owned cooperative. Mm -hmm. And that's very important to us. They're a larger company, yes, but what they are first is cranberry growers and they're farmers. And again, for us to an, embrace sort of a vertically integrated concept, um, to partner with them to be able to control from the grower to the juice extraction to bottling here, we just felt that, that it was it was it's a match made in heaven for us. Mm -hmm. So to reiterate real quick, it is it is a partnership, but it is our brand, and really what they are to us is is a world class grower or supply for us for Kramer. Now, I mean, you're going national with the brand, or your your hope is to go national with the yep. brand. You're uh, partnering with Whole Foods to go uh, for an, with an exclusive for six months sure. with a new uh, line. Um, you know, what kind of challenges does does that present? Uh, from for scaling so quickly. I mean, you have a pretty decent sized operation here with your own HPP machine and sure. a lot of state of the art equipment. Um, you know, what sort of challenges do you foresee in the next few months rolling out this line? Yeah, the challenges. I mean, other than the general, uh, you know, ironing out production flow and throughput and things like that, we're pretty confident. We've taken our time and, and thought about it. Um, I think again, there, you know, a lot of the Ocean Spray growers are, are going to change the way they supply fruit to us um, and as far as they, how they clean it and whatnot. Yeah. So when we receive fruit and just getting that to flow smoothly, um, that's probably going to be one of the challenges, at least from our end. But no, we've got a great uh, grower partner with Ocean Spray, and they're really excited to be able to, to help share a great natural renewable resource that they've been mastering for 80 years now and to help a company really be able to work with that on a different level. So they're excited about it. And again, 
it's they're growers. They're grower-owned cooperatives. So the growers are very excited about it because we're really putting out cranberry juice in, in sort of an innovative way that's that's quite true to the way it, it is consumed on a lot of the family farms, you know? So in addition to the new cranberry line, you guys are going national with your bar juice line. You got it. Uh, the bar juice line has been uh, a pretty popular item here in the Northeast. There's a lot of uh, uh, con converts, for sure, on-premise and off. Um, yes. You know, the the craft cocktail scene has been big. Craft spirits are really big. This is, uh, you know, air premiumization and, and throughout the category. Um, how are you guys sort of approaching education? Um, it's 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 premium priced, uh, so you know people still have to understand that. Yes. Yeah. Even though it tastes good, it's kind of expensive. I um, mean, mm -hmm. you know, how are you approaching education from an on-premise and off-premise perspective? It is an educational thing, and we've been successful with the brand and in introducing it, bar juice that is, to the consumer by doing a couple of very simple things. And that's obviously number one, getting it in people's mouths. Um, they have to understand the difference between a, a standard shelf stable mixer and a cold press for a squeezed one. Um, in that, the beauty of it is, we are the first cold pressed bar mixer on the market. Typically, you would never walk into a liquor store, package store, or a, a grocery store and see a mixer being tasted. But since we are a cold pressed juice, we do that all the time. We'll, uh, at Whole Foods, for example, we'll do a tasting with our agave margarita or agave lemon sour, um, and we'll taste it straight. It's a little stronger because it is a mixer. There's a higher juice content in it. We'll taste it straight or we'll taste it alongside some sparkling water and cut it one to one. And the beauty is, um, it is a fresh juice, so we can get away with doing that simultaneously, educating the consumer on the quality difference and you know the game we're playing there. But again, um, we you know that that healthy libations, what we call it, is 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 a very very popular trendy item right now, and we're seeing just just phenomenal growth um, in all channels that we play in, both retail and on premise. And uh, you know our partners, obviously Whole Foods, that are as assisting us in introducing cold pressed bar mixers to the country, are, are quite excited about it as well too, and really have helped us out a lot. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have education from one is one component uh, to the success of this brand. Distribution is obviously another big component Huge, as well. Yeah, big. You guys have done some innovative partnerships uh, here in the Northeast with uh, Berkshire Brewing Company, yes. distributing some of your uh, bar juice. Um, you know, from both an on-premise and off-premise, I mean, this is one of the difficulties in, in managing a brand like this. But, um, you know, how are you approaching getting this... Uh, getting this line out to you know the various bars and restaurants as well as the specialty and natural uh, uh, retailers of the world. Yeah. Um, okay. So th for a smaller company like us, it's one of our biggest challenges, but it's a huge advantage for us. So we, pl because of Ripe Bar Juice being playing in natural specialty grocery on premise, meaning hotels, bars, and restaurants, there's a huge opportunity there for us in growing the brand and, and increasing sales. However, like you said, the challenge is getting it from point A to point B quickly. Um, it's no problem for us in the grocery space. We've figured that out. Uh, great you know, uh, distributors like UNFI, and we actually go direct to some of the Whole Foods DCs and some of the regions we're in. But as far as getting ripe bar juice, which is to, a, to one of our main channels, which is on premise, hotels, bars, and restaurants, restaurants. In each region we're in, we've embraced um, a model that includes in each region, so let's pick, pick Boston, for example, we will have sort of a smaller specialty produce guy. So your typical produce distributor who will take ripe bar juice into a lot of the bars, hotels, restaurants they serve. Um, and we like produce guys because they understand cold chain management. You know, they understand that, that our stuff's a cold pressed bottle of juice. It can't just sit around out in the sun for even 10 minutes. Um, so we love the produce guys because they understand produce. They understand cold chain management. In each region, we will also use a broadliner at times. And, and as we grow, we're really relying on a lot of broadliners because, again, we might get into a larger regional restaurant chain group, for instance, like Illegal Seafoods, for example, um, where they'll have you know, 25, 30 locations spread over a larger region, like New England plus even more. And a lot of the times, the, the smaller produce guy doesn't have that breadth or that, that radius that they cover, whereas the broadliner will. Mm -hmm. And again, as we become more of a national brand and start dealing with some larger national restaurant groups, the broadliners are very important. But there's one channel that is our biggest challenge up until now, and that's liquor stores and package stores. And so how do we really answer liquor store and package stores? And that's where uh, one of our newest models came in, and it's been working well, and that's Berkshire Brewing Company. You know, a great brewing company that really prides itself in putting out unpasteurized craft beer. And with that, 
they were frustrated at a particular point in time as well too because when they were younger they had to establish uh, distribution and it was tough for them to find that like a lot of great brewers in this country do so they decided to start a lot of distribution themselves now it's a great model for us because craft beer craft cocktails works their sales team and our sales team get along very well we're both adding incremental you know, um, options to the portfolio of 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 Berkshire Brewing Company um, and it's it, it just makes sense you know when when our sales guy walk into a, a craft beer uh, a little pub or something with a Berkshire Brewing Company uh, salesperson it's it, it makes sense you know because again a lot of these on-premise locations we do very well in with craft cocktails with ripe bar juice are the same spots that um, you know a husband and wife or girlfriend and boyfriend is going to go in you know the guy might want to have a couple great IPAs but maybe the girl doesn't want to but she still wants to have a great craft cocktail and so it just makes sense for us to be working with that that brewing company. Um, it's a model that obviously we want to be able to take into different regions across the U.S. and something we're putting a lot of attention into. But again, with the premiumization as a whole happening in a lot of different areas, we are seeing a lot of uh, smaller distributors, whether they're liquor distributors or beer distributors, start buying refrigerated trucks because, again, they care about temperature control, number one, for wines, sake, uh, even some spirits. And, uh, you know, it's something we're hoping is going to evolve. Um, but, again, that, that model of go-to-market for bar juice is probably one of the biggest challenges. I mean, people say, hey, it's not tough what you're doing. And we admit it's not. There's a lot of technology involved with it. But getting it from point A to point B cold mm -hmm. quickly is really the biggest challenge. Sure. Well, Mike, this has been fantastic. Thanks totally, so much totally. for thanks having for us. Having you have a great facility. Good Thank luck you so with much. Everything, and Cheers. we look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, thanks a lot. Appreciate great it. Great having you guys down. Thank Cheers. You. Thanks.